everybody, welcome back to our episode of DFS Fantasy NASCAR Picks. I'm Russ Mike, we're 31. Get this video out early tonight because it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Yeah, if you haven't played Super Speedway DFS, uh, three rules as on the screen there. Play light. You can leave money on table, even 10K, more than that. If you like your line, don't feel you have to pay off for people. And place differential is king. Fast laps and off sled are spread out all through the race pretty much. So it's really not, it's very rare that to be like one or two dominators here. It's usually spread out so much. And because the track is a uh, super speedway, it's longer in length for each lap. There aren't as many laps as if you're on like a half mile or a, a mile short track where you can have like two, three, four, five hundred 500 laps here. So um, it's a pretty chalky uh, build, I think. I think that, um, and come back to the video after lock, and I will post what I'm talking about here. Uh, if you don't figure it out yourself, but I think there's going to be a very chalky cash lineup, and it's actually to the dollar like you have zero dollars left. I don't know if it's going to be the most effective, but it stacks people in the back. It gets some pretty good people that are still starting back that have a shot at winning this, and uh, you have no money left, and I think a lot of people look at it, and, and I'll, I'll probably play that in cash, but I know I'm not going to take down GPP with it. And if you think if you're just like stacking 33 through 38, is that, yeah, that's six drivers, um, that you're the smartest person in the room, that's going to be another duplicated line that um, is going to probably, if it does hit, you're going to share the top prize with probably a thousand people. So uh, let's talk through this and um, see what we can do to try to uh, maybe make some different lines and maybe help you take down a GPP. So uh, there are no dominators. So I use the UDOM tag as somebody that I think that could win the race. So I have that up there. Um, so these are potential people that are starting. Um, some of the other cash plays and prime plays also could win this race. Anybody can win this race. And if you see that somebody's starting in the back or whatever, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. It's so easy to pass here. Uh, as long as you can, don't lose like the lead draft or, or have like a stop and go. If you have a stop and go penalty um, for some strange reason, like if there's some violation for tech or something like that, the, then that could be pretty dangerous because if you lose this lead draft, I mean, obviously after the first record, the first caution and the first stage, you'll be able, you probably be the only car down unless somebody else has an issue. So, I mean, he probably can get back on the lead lap. Um, Austin, or who was it? Ryan Seek had a tire go down and ended up off the um, lead lap and towards the end of the Xfinity race. But um, after his caution and stuff, they were able to get back on the lead lap because he was like the only one that was down. So um, just kind of rode around with the rest of the pack. And then when it came, like, so it is possible for there so <clears throat> a qualifying really doesn't mean anything other than their i know larson was disqualified and um you know some of these guys screwed up their qualifying lap and didn't um you know do too well so they're starting down the back of the field and some of these did really well so i think the top six are all fades I mean, now he could win this, yes. Great play in FanDuel. I'm not gonna play him on DK. Sindrick, um, he has he won his first race as rookie rear at a super speedway at Daytona. Um, could win and run again. I mean, if anything, to kind of break the seal and get him back on track, this could be a good track for him. Gillian, uh, you know, it's looked decent on super speedways. Britt Bush, the RCR cars, they they were up there one and two most of the race. Jesse Love ended up winning it in um, Xfinity. Uh, same thing here. And uh, both cars looked good, but not playing either one of them because there's too much of a liability if they crash. And even if they do win the race here, I don't think it's going to be a case like Austin Hill where they can lead a bunch of laps and end up in the optimal. So it's very, very dangerous. There's no floor here. And I don't think I'm touching any of these top um, six drivers here. Joey Logano, I can see though. Joey Logano has um on play tracks like to get up there and go out there and lead. So um that's uh something that really 
uh, could potentially. Again, it's it's still a very dangerous play. And if I did play Logano, I would probably play everybody else from 30 on back just to create myself enough floor if he does crash that um, I would be able, if somebody else, if everybody else loses one driver, but the rest of my drivers hit, then I'm fine. Um, you know, I'll still like cash. I won't be able to take down the GVP. Then, you know, I might go that way. Busher, I like, but again, I think it's a fade. Elliot, he has one last week, so I don't know if he'll be approaching races differently now that he should be locked into the playoffs. So congratulations. I did not see that coming at all. I don't think any of us saw that coming in at all, but does that mean Chase Elliott's back? I don't think so. So if people are going to chase it, let them. I'm not touching him in this race. Christopher Bell doesn't necessarily deserve a seat at the table with Harrison Burton and Joe Graff Jr., but he is becoming a liability. Like, he has been having, like, a terrible season, just, like, mistake after mistake. And I don't know if it's they're not all his fault, but it, whether it's bad luck or, or some things, his pick crew has actually improved. His pick crew was killing him last year. So he got a better pick crew, but now he's the one that's, like, making the mistakes so they just can't put it together here so definitely out at him and even away from super speedways it's gonna be a while before i see something for him, him before i start playing him in cash games again Reese, uh another fade here i just I, I like him but i just don't think that um i could see him like try to drop into the back and stuff and being conservative so bowman wouldn't surprise me if he won this one uh, does pretty well at these uh, races. Byron, same thing, would surprise me if he ends up winning the race uh, or gets in a wreck first. Um, you know, he do, he's aggressive. He does like to get up there and lead. Uh, so, again, those two I'd only play in a GPP if I think that they're the one that's going to win the race. And, and, you know, you might want to take and do like a in like a, if you're doing a 20 max like build your floor on the bottom and then just rotate in Logano, Bowman Byron, Bubba Wallace he has one on I think it was Talladega I think it was rain shortened but like he's really good on super speedways uh, so you know he's one you always gotta consider and Ty Gibbs is just like knocking on the door and he's one that can be up there and this, this is a good shot for him to potentially get his first win also so any of these ones are like Harrison Burton, no, 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 no. I mean, if Harrison Burton was starting 36, maybe I consider it. Harrison Burton starting 16th. Absolutely not. No way. Uh, Shane Van Ginsburg. Interesting. I mean, he was up there and did pretty well at this, um, in the Xfinity race. And it doesn't, and colleague has been good on plate training, or plate tracks. I'm sorry. I can try not to say that. Super speedways. So I think he's very intriguing here as an upside dominator, as someone that could um, great plan FanDuel probably too, because he's probably a lot of salary relief. Um, so I, I keep him in consideration for the upside dominator. Tyler Reddick, I take it or leave it. Um, not, I, I think, you know, starting 18th here, he's just on the cusp of where you want. So you know, maybe, I don't think he's, I don't think he can win it. I mean, again, anybody could win it. Um, so you got to keep that in consideration. That's why I fade in more of a GPP here. Hemrick, same thing. Colleague has been good. Like he was okay when he was in Xfinity, but I just, I, I don't know here. I just don't feel his cash play started way too far forward. I uh, mean, maybe like a one to 5% sprinkled in just in case, like he ends up in the top five or something. So I I, I just I don't have a great feeling about that. John Hunter and Yumachek probably should be a fade. Like he and Bell just get into so many accidents and, and issues that um I I just can't play him in cash. Blaney, I really like in cash here, and I think it'll be very popular. Uh he's a nut will probably go try to hook up with the other Fords up front. And, um, you know, that's another thing that you want to just try to stack as manufacturers. So I'll definitely, GPPs have a Ford group, which um, I probably won't throw in like Mandal, Cindric, and, and Gilly because they're not too far before, but Logano, Busher, um, 
maybe Harrison Burton gets in that one, but Blaney Kozlowski and then like maybe Briscoe or Barry Gregson, like, you know, like some of the forwards that are starting like down here. So, you know, maybe I'll take like Logano up there and, and, and then try to get like some of the other forwards here, hoping that they all like go into the group and Logano wins the race or Blaney wins the race, and then, you know, I, I have a, enough points for upside. Toyota's too usually works really well. Again, I'd probably leave Truex and Bell out of it, but, like, Wallace, Gibbs, Nemechek, Hamlin, Jones, and then figure out who else you want to put. You might, might take a one-off there. Uh, Chevy's, same thing. Um, you know, probably maybe you could do, like, a Hendrix group together and throw in. They'll probably work together. Um The Spire ones, I don't know. Like the Rick Ware ones used to like hang around in the back together. So we'll, we'll have to see with with that. Like I went through a BJ Mitchell in that group. He's probably going to stay and be a back marker. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, again, like you want to, you don't want to use like the Chevys up up here because it's going to be dangerous. I don't care if they, they win the race or whatever. I think they're just too vulnerable like even Hendrick stack, like having like these guys up here is is a YOLO GPP almost. I might take like these guys and then like go from like down here to try to give you enough floor in case something happens that you can at least cash and you're not gonna lose everything in the GPP. You know, at least maybe break even there. So, you know, that's that's why I like like Blaney because they work with like the Penske cars and usually should be up front. Um, same thing with Kozlowski, but he has had issues on um, super speedways recently. I mean, there was one time there was really good. So that's why I have him as upside dominator because it wouldn't surprise me if he does get up front, it could potentially win this race. But Denny Hamlin, I think, has got to be a prime play. Like he had a streak where he was like before this next gen car where he was just outstanding at super speedways. I think it was more Daytona than Talladega, but still the principle's there. And he's not a 23rd place car and should be able to make his way up and, and have a solid day and stay out of trouble. So um, he's going to be my first prime play. Anthony Alfredo actually surprisingly was battling in the top five most of the day in the Xfinity series. So um, in this beard car, they just do one thing. They build cars for super speedways and they use their decent. So if the car doesn't have any mechanical issues because they don't race all the time, then I think Alfredo could be sneaky, but I'm playing with GPP and I'm not playing with cash. Suarez track house has been good here. So I think he's cash. Uh, Briscoe, same thing. Stuart Haas, um, not 26 place car, should be able to work his way up. Justin Haley, Rick Ware, again, they usually like to stay in the back. Justin Haley, who has been decent on super speedways. So I, I think that he's in play, but borderline cash. But I just worry about him. It not being like up with like some of the other Fords and, 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 and things like that. And um, kind of staying back with the rest of some of the back marker cars, just kind of hanging out, waiting for things to happen. And sometimes that can end up being trouble. Uh, Eric Jones is good at uh, super speedways. Um, I always thought that his first win was going to come on one. Um, so he's uh he's definitely in play. Josh Berry, same thing. Like this is in the 29th place car. He was good at um when he was at, with Juniors Motorsports and Xfinity uh on super speedways. So definitely think he's in play. Zane Smith, like I feel this spire car is like the afterthought one. It it just you know, it seems like Josefar and, and the Joy have the resources and, and Zane Smith just isn't. Um, it's kind of a step below them. So I just kind of worry about that. I don't know what the Spire is going to do here. Um, you know, are, are they going to try to work together or so? I, I, she's going to do PPP for me. Floyd LaJoy, I think, has upside here. I think he's going to be highly owned um, for cash. Ross Chastain, I think he's going to be very chalky here. And, um, should is pretty aggressive. The aggressiveness can get the best of him sometimes in, in cases like this. Uh, he kind of like Sheldon Creed, remind a little bit. Um, 
in Xfinity, but he, he seemed to have matured a little bit. Like he used to be a huge liability, but uh, he's he's matured uh, a lot there. But I think he's a c- solid cash play and it will be very super popular. Ricky Stenthouse, same thing. He's been good on super speedways. He's won on a super speedway before, so he should be um, in consideration. Cody Ware again, I don't know what's going to happen with the Rick Ware cars. So GPP for me, I like so many other plays down here better that he's the one that I might kind of skip over in my stacks. Uh, Carson Hovsevar, uh was good in truck series on super speedways. And again, I think that he has the upside and, you know, he can only lose like three points here, but he's going to get an automatic two for uh, where he's starting if he finished 38. So uh, he's going to at least net one point there. So, uh, no, Gregson was very good, very, very good um, in Xfinity on super speedways. And I think definitely he should be able to get up there and he'll work with the Fords and he should have a great finishing position. He's got a shot at 15 to 20 place differential points there if he finishes in like the, the top 10. BJ McLeod, I think most people are the, this is the one that they're going to skip over, but BJ McLeod is having a solid season. Uh, when he has raced and you know he will be conservative he will hang out in the back hopefully he'll be able to stay on the lead draft and everything uh but i think if bj because there in the end and definitely finishes maybe top 25 just just around top 25 if you look at 10 to 12 place differential points at 5100 that's great could end up in the optimal lineup fine with that and the carl larson starting dead last at a super speedway with nothing but upside shotgun in the field yet yeah, at only 9k like bring it on i think that that is great so like i said you're probably going to want to play right in here for your cash build you know without the gpp these these are this is where you want to play cash you don't want to play anything up here so build you know with the three primes and what other 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 cash ones that you want to put in there? I think that's a safe enough floor for you. If there even is a cash game in a super speedway, it's a high variant sport, and this just makes it even more high variance. So, um, you know, that's that's what I got. Hopefully, the rain stays away, and that this and that's another thing that could come into play is that you know strategies and stuff to stay out and and gamble on fuel and, and things like that. And just hope that um, you're going to be able to have enough fuel to be able to get to um, like the finish, the finish line. And like sometimes they cut it close at the end, and you have caution after caution. And you know we saw in Atlanta in the Xfinity race, like people just kept on running out of gas left and right. And there were a couple in this Xfinity one, but. Um, for some reason, Jesse Love was able to have enough uh, fuel, even though he pitted like seven laps after or before, like uh, the rest of the field where guys were running out. So I don't know how that um, worked out, but um, somehow did. So congratulations to him on his first win. So that's pretty much what I got for you. Uh, again, I think that it's going to be Larson is, is it's going to be probably the highest owned driver. And then, you know, you're just going to build from there on up. And I'm probably going to cut it off around like 21st is like the last one um, that I'm going to, that I'm going to look at. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. It could be a crazy race. I mean, usually there's not many people up here that end up in the optimal unless it's like just the winner. So, that's what I'm doing in GPPs. And again, I said stack manufacturers, you have the team list here and everything. So, you know, to just go through and group like um, Gibbs cars and Hendrix cars and Toyota cars, um, Ford, Chevys in, in groups two and GPP, but try not to have too many of the people like all the way up here and there. Um, try to make the groups out of the ones that are more down here. That way you still have the floor if they if there is um if you lose one of them, it's, it's not going to be as catastrophic to you. So that's what we got for you. Um I think we have Dover next week. So I was kind of back to a, a normal track and not um really specially 
ones where you have to have like a different set of rules for DFS. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat below. Hit me up at Megaro31 on Twitter slash X. Uh, if these videos help you, you can help us back by um, liking, subscribing to our channel and sharing with your friends. And if you want more information on FSI DFS, go to the description of the video. And there's a link to our website where you can see our pricing package. I'd say it would have been a great day to spend six bucks because we had soccer, we had NASCAR, we had NHL playoff start, we had NBA playoff start, we had MLB, we had a double slate, we had a day slate, we had a night slate. We covered that. Um, MMA, I think, is going on. That's um, and that's that's a free in our Discord. And I thought there was something else going on today, but uh, yeah, so so lots of sports, and you need and a one day pass is like six dollars, so very very affordable. Um, for that so uh that's what i got for you if you, have, you know how to get a hold of me if you have any questions so hope you have a good weekend hope the rain holds off hope we have an amazing race um and if there are any wrecks that are very safe and that there's no um major injuries from them and that uh, we can all make money and uh end the weekend on a positive note so till next week good luck in your contests i'll see you next time